Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CTC 230. This is your third organic chemistry course in the chemical technology program. And I want you to celebrate because this is the last organic chemistry class that you will have to take in the program. Now, when we say organic chemistry, you know, very often we look back at the courses that you've completed so far. You started off with an intro to organic with our CTC 120. You then kind of upgraded into the summer course which was a little bit more advanced organic and that one actually had a laboratory component and then we ended up with last semester in our organic chemistry 2 course that was much more complicated as you saw than the previous organic chemistry classes so what is this one going to be like is this going to be harder than the 220 class or what am I to expect when I go through this lecture material and I start studying for these lecture topics? Well, this is Organic Chemistry 3, but this is also known as Biochemistry, short for Biological Chemistry. All of the organic compounds that we're going to be talking about this semester really relate to your bodily functions. That's what we're doing this semester. That's what we're doing in this class. So some of the lecture topics that we are going to see include topics like carbohydrates, lipids, amino acids, and DNA and nucleic acids. We only have four lecture topics to cover. That's it. So this equates to four chapters in your textbook. So as far as the lecture material goes, you're going to see us scale back much more than what we really did in 220, the previous organic chemistry class, which, again, is good news for you as well, right? Less lecture topics probably means less studying, but I have to forewarn you. These lecture topics can get complicated. These lecture topics will start off very simple, and then they will quickly build up in complexity. So I need you, again, to watch the videos. You know who you are. Make sure that you read the textbook. Make sure that you read the chapters. And make sure that you're staying current on the lecture material itself. Because if you don't, you cannot learn this material overnight. You cannot learn this material in two days time. You can't learn the material in three days time. You have to continuously watch these videos over the course of the upcoming weeks in order to prepare yourselves for the module tests that happen at the very end of the due dates. So. If I look at the syllabus, this is the syllabus that we're seeing, and I need to go through and we need to talk about some of the things that might be a little bit different than your traditional syllabus that you've gotten from me. So again, up at the top, you're going to see my contact information. Depending on the semester that you are viewing this, the office hours could change and the office location could even change. So my advice, of course, go to the syllabus link download the syllabus, look at the current version of the syllabus in Blackboard, and that way you can kind of be matching the semester to semester's worth of material. Meeting times, uh, this course is a hybrid course. Now what that means is that just like our previous classes, you have a laboratory component that you meet with us face to face, and then you have a lecture component that will be fully online through Blackboard and a series of YouTube videos. Just like before, all of these modules are going to be broken down according to chapter. And then when you take a look at the chapter, well, this kind of equates to a couple of hours worth, at least, of lecture material. In total, throughout the semester, we have 16 weeks. Well, this class is supposed to meet two hours a week for lecture, so that means 32 hours of lecture content. Okay, why is that important? Because notice what I said, two hours of lecture a week. So that really means that if you we were coming traditionally to class and meeting face to face, you would have to spend two hours of lecture a week in the classroom studying this material and learning this material. So that means that you need to be doing the same thing at home. You need to be watching at least 
two hours worth of lecture material a week. Now what does that equate to? Well, these videos, as you know, break down to about a 10-minute snippet on average apiece. So that means that I should be watching around 12 videos a week in order to basically stay on track with the course, stay on track with the module deadlines, and really not be bombarded with all of this lecture material at one time. There is something that I have to forewarn you about, however. This course and all the other courses in the CT program this semester are structured and delivered on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Notice I did not say Wednesday. Wednesday are off limits, bottom line. We do not want you in our lab on Wednesday. We do not want you in our computer room on Wednesday. We do not want you in our instrumentation room on Wednesday. Wednesday is a day for us to really stay on track as well. So we have no classes, either first year classes or second year classes on Wednesday. There's no point in you being here on Wednesday. You need to take the Wednesday off, have a midweek break where you do not have to worry about coming in and doing anything, and then we'll see you again on Thursday. If we catch you in our wet lab, in our instrumentation room or in our computer room on a Wednesday we will immediately deduct two points from your cumulative average at the end of the semester and that's for every violation that you do so if we catch you there four times on a Wednesday well that means we're going to take eight points off of your cumulative average at the very end so I need all of you to understand that we're not trying to be mean we're not trying to make your life miserable. We're not trying to take a day away from you so you can't catch up in lab because as you're going to see, well, you shouldn't really be struggling behind in lab that much. So no to Wednesdays. Absolutely not. Now you're probably wondering, well, this is a hybrid course. Why can't I go into the computer room because I can watch lectures on this day? No, because what will happen is that you will go into the computer room you will begin to watch videos or you will begin to work on lab reports and then you will migrate out of the computer room and you will come into the wet lab anyway and ask questions or you will come out of the computer room and go to the office and ask questions or go to the instrument room and ask questions and we have other things basically that we have to do on Wednesdays. So absolutely no to computer room, instrument room, and wet room on Wednesdays, period, point blank. The doors will stay locked. Don't ask for the keys. Don't come around. So stay away, as mean as that sounds. It's good for you, and it's good for us. Available classrooms, 307, 302, 305, and 306. All of these are available to you to use, except for Wednesdays. So be our guest, stop in. Of course, you've got to be there during lab time. Um, and uh, use those rooms to your advantage. Uh, the textbook. Well, the textbook you should already have. Uh, we're currently working out of the seventh edition. Depending on the semester that you're viewing these videos, this could be a newer edition. But you don't need the newest edition in order to make it through the course. You really just need an edition. So the fifth or the sixth, those ISBN numbers are listed there for you if you do want an older edition and save some money. The material's the same. The order might be slightly different. Otherwise, you know, same material, same book, just a different cover, different face. Lab manual, you should also have the lab manual for the course. This is the Operational Organic Chemistry Lab Manual. It's the hardback book that you've been working out of in the past CTC courses. Now, if you do not have this book, then my advice is to take a look at the lab lineup because in this semester particularly the labs can fluctuate quite a bit and you could get lucky and you could see a lab list that has no labs out of that book
book being pulled from it. However, we like to keep things fresh every now and then. So, you know, don't be surprised if this semester or again, whatever year you view this video, on that syllabus you do see a lab pulled from the red hardback book. If that is the case and there's just one of them, let us know because we probably have a photocopy ready for you. There's no sense in buying a complete book just for one lab if you don't have it at this point. So there's the Operational Organic Chemistry Lab Manual. Those are hardbacks. The fourth and the third edition ISBN numbers are listed in the syllabus for you. Again, check the lab list. See if you even need it first. And then if you think that you do need it, then be my guest. Purchase it. Prereqs, course description, add drop dates, withdraw dates, all of those are basically the same. We've got... Um, uh, as, as the other courses, uh, we've got no new information in there to present to you. Please take a look at those dates. Make sure that you understand the academic calendar. Grade distribution, right? One of my favorite things on the syllabus. How is your grade going to be broken down in this course? Well, number one, look at the grade distribution over to the left. You are going to see a series of labs, homework, tests, and quizzes. Notice what the laboratories say, 34% of the grade. It's kind of a weird total, but it's kind of close to one-third. So if you are the type of person that relies on laboratories to get you through this class, then you're going to struggle this semester. Quit relying on the laboratories to make you pass these courses, right? Again, like I've said before, I can train a monkey to do a job in a laboratory, and I don't want you to be a monkey, right? I don't want you to go in not knowing what you're doing and just following a recipe on a daily basis and not really understand what you're doing or why you're doing it in the first place. So I don't need you to have that type of attitude. So because of that, I need you to focus on the lecture material. I need you to fully understand what's happening in these labs, what's going on, why are they working, why are they doing what they're supposed to be doing. That is what we're after. And that's actually more important than doing the lab itself. Now, of course, we want you to have good numbers. Of course, we want you to have good lab grades. Of course, we want you to have very good lab books. But the laboratories are 34% of your grade point blank so about a third the two-thirds of the remaining course will come from lecture in the form of test in the form of quizzes and in the form of homework yes you do have homework in this class boo-hoo right so if I take a look at the homework you're gonna see mastering chemistry underneath it and mastering chemistry is a additional software platform that you will have to purchase for the class we'll talk about it in the next video the homework is worth 21 percent of your grade then I take a look at the test that will be done on Blackboard that is worth 31% of your grade and then I look at the quizzes and that will be done on Blackboard as well and that is 14% of the grade the quizzes you've experienced these types of quizzes before or these kinds of assignments before at least the quizzes will be structured as one question at a time you have to answer it they will be timed and you cannot backtrack and fix or change an answer once you submit it uh, the test Currently, this syllabus says Blackboard, but I encourage you to take a look at the current version of the syllabus because this can change. Uh, even though we say Blackboard, uh, this could be a in-person test, and I would take strongly encourage you to take a look at the current version of the syllabus. Make sure that these tests are Blackboard or in-person, and then we'll kind of settle that when we get to the those module tests at the end of the semester. The grade distribution is going to be an eight-point scale. So we're looking at 92, 84, 76, 68. If you have a 67.3, I will not pass you in the class. Bottom
bottom line, right? Because that probably means that you could have answered one more homework question correctly. That probably means that you could have put in a little bit more effort in that lab or that spreadsheet to get a better grade. So I am a stickler for the lab eight point scales and not rounding off and not giving you any kind of cushion. Because if you worked hard, if you knew what you were doing, if you submitted quality work, you shouldn't be having that low of a grade anyway. So we're going to pause here. In the next video, we'll continue on with the syllabus.